The next few videos I'm going to be posting will be chronicling the build process for a backup power system that I'm installing for my father-in-law. He wanted everything to be reliable, so we doubled up and tripled up on everything. You're going to see that in the video. <laughs> uh, it's project overkill. We have 10 of the A123 7S modules and we have a 3000 watt pure sine wave low frequency inverter that we're going to use uh, with these batteries. This is officially being dubbed project overkill because these can dump in this configuration we're going to do a 2S, 5E I guess you would say string. So these are all going to have their own individual BMSs just to keep track of everything. The only other way to do this safely would be to parallel each individual cell together across these. So we're going to go with the five BMSs just for a little added safety. Uh, but this is project overkill because these batteries can dump on a pulse 138,000 watts. We're going to go big on everything, which you're going to see in this video. Everything's going to be more than it needs to be, but it works out because that's safer. Down here, we have a 1,000 amp continuous bus bar. Uh, these were on sale at Dell City Electrical Supply, so they were normally $205. They were on sale for $56. For our serial connections, we're going to use these braided wires that came out of the module when I did the disassembly. They're flexible, so we'll just be folding these over and doing our connections like this. I purchased this dialess crimper to try out. I'm pretty excited about that because it will accept anything from number 8 to 4 on. So you don't have to swap out dies and it's, it's uh, mechanical, it's not hydraulic. This system should be about 12 kilowatt hours. The expectation is to have about one day of running a fridge, freezer, and sump pump. And I think this is probably going to do three or four days, possibly more, but we'll see. This is the layout I plan to use for the battery and inverter connections. This will be screwed down to a piece of plexiglass. Each of the five battery strings will have their own ANL fuse on the positive wire for safety, and the inverters will have their own terminal block fuses here. I still need to order one more ANL fuse, and that will go right here, but there's plenty of work to do as it is. So let's make some wires. So the plan for wiring these up is to have this first stud here run as I show it here. The second one is going to run to the second stud. This third one is going to run to the third stud. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. This will run to this first stud. And then when I get the second one, that'll run to the second stud. So just to kind of give some background on the way I'm going to lay this out. To make all my crimp connections, I am using this dieless crimper. And basically the way this works is there's a threaded backstop on this. And the larger diameter wire, this moves out. And it has settings here to tell you. So this is number 8 wire. And then all the way out here is 4 aught wire. So it'll do anything in between. And you basically just line these up and you're good to go. So I really like this. This is all one gauge wiring. So you can see that I have this set for number one gauge wire. If you're looking for a wire cutter, this is really awesome. Klein tools, it will cut any di diameter wire you have, but it's got a really fine ratcheting mechanism in this. So it is just an absolute beast. It, it's like butter. So all you do for this is put your lug in this side, hold the wire together, and push it down. A little bit of resistance, but not bad. And you end up with a really nice crimp. It kind of puts a, a tapered edge on this side, and you're good to go. So I ordered all of this from Temco. This is uh, pure copper lugs. This is all welding cable. And then I ordered some of this 3 quarter inch marine grade three to one reduction shrink tubing and this stuff's pretty thick it feels like it's high quality and uh, so now we're going to slip this on here and shrink it down so another nice thing about this shrink tubing is the adhesive that's underneath so you can see it kind of pushing out here and make sure you have a nice solid connection doesn't want to slip around or anything like that
we got our bus bars and fuse holders mounted to a piece of plexiglass. Uh, this is going to be the outside of the shelf and this is going to be the inside of the shelf. You'll see that momentarily. Uh, still waiting on one ANL fuse holder, but that will go here. I jumped the gun and just made a wire, so we'll just have to make that work. Let's throw it in the shelf. So we have five of these batteries mocked up where they're going to go. They're going to be uh, five wide and then it's going to be two deep. And I have our bus bar and fuse set up up here. Um, what we're going to do is go through and start wiring up all of our negatives. And the negatives are actually going to run to the back side of our plate. And then the positives that are on this side are going to run to all of our fuses up top. So let's get started with that. you this real quick so we're bringing it up to the third post here running it down around the plexiglass this is all slack right now it'll be tighter when we actually do the install this is just to get the wire lengths figured out and it runs through this spine here comes out and then it'll mount right there so now we can cut this right here where my thumb is and make our third cable because I'm going to be running two positive wires on this end and three positive wires on this end, I'm going to do the opposite with the negative cables. So I'm going to run these three to this side, so we'll have five cables coming in on this side, and then these two are going to run to the right, so we'll have five cables coming in on this side. Uh, and that'll make my OCD symmetry happy. Now we have all of our negative cabling done. Uh, we're ready to push these to the other side for the positive terminal so we can cut all that wiring. Uh, I'm not gonna record any of that because you're not gonna be able to really see back there anyway. But when we get that all done, I'll get a good overview shot of all of the wiring, how it comes into the bus bars and fuse blocks and stuff like that. Now I have all of the negative wires ran for the five battery strings. And I've also ran all of the positive wires, and I'll bring you guys in here so you can see it a little more clearly. So we have the three positives running to their fuses on this side, and then the two negatives running up. The three positives run into this bus bar. This will be our inverter hookups. Uh, we'll use this one for right now, and if there's a second inverter down the line, this will be the positive hookup for that. Just trying to think ahead. And then the negatives run back here. Uh, run back here to these two studs and then on this side we've got we'll have this and a second ANL fuse here but we have the cabling ran for that already and then these are our two two positive cables on this side and then we have three negative cables over here and we're gonna zip tie all this down you can see we started doing this, some of the zip tying already and these will be the positive leads for these three batteries Pretty straightforward, but just trying to get everything cleaned up, do as much as we can for right now. Another reason this is project overkill is that all of this battery cabling is one gauge wire. And even at 3000 watts, our 48 volt setup is well under 100 amps. So we could probably use one of these cables to power the inverter, but instead we have five. So if you can afford bigger cable for your setup, it is always a good idea never hurts to go thicker on the cable, but bad things happen when you go chintzy and end up with thinner cable. We're actually going to be using 3 aught wire for the inverter cabling. The manufacturer recommends one aught, so we figured we better just go 3 aught. So this 3 aught wiring is absolutely monstrous. I can't wait to make some cables with this. Look how thick this stuff is. It's absolutely insane. I hope, hope that's in focus, but it's like as big around as my index finger. So I think that's going to be able to handle anything we can throw at it. I couldn't resist trying out making a connection and, and crimping a terminal lug on there with the crimper that I've been using and using that cutter. And it, it worked flawlessly, super clean cut and crimped it without issue. 
<laughs> ridiculous. As of right now, we are trying to figure out where the inverters are going to go. They may go down here on this shelf, and they also we may also go with mounting them up here on the wall. Again, trying to keep the thought process of if there's two inverters, we want space. We don't want to reconfigure everything. And we're waiting on BMSs to show up. And once we figure out the location for the inverter, we'll be running all of the wiring for that as well. But all of that's going to be in a future video. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah.